Welcome to our lecture online. Now that you've seen some examples of how to take the curl in Cartesian coordinate uh, and in cylindrical coordinate systems, um, we're now going to actually work out a real problem. We're going to take a cylindrical region where current exists. Let's say this is a conductor. And we want to know uh, the B field uh, somewhere inside this cylindrical shaped object at a distance r away from the center, but not quite all the way out to the very edge of that cylindrical conductor. Assuming that charge is flowing through the cylindrical conductor evenly spread out in a uniform density such that the current density j is equal to i divided by the area or the total current through the cylinder divided by pi r squared. Now at the edge of the cylinder, the magnetic field, uh, the strength of the magnetic field in the direction in the direction circular around the, uh, the current here would be equal to mu sub naught times i divided by 2 pi r times uh, the theta vector, the theta unit vector. Now, inside the cylinder, the magnetic field is going to be equal to mu sub naught times i times r, r being the distance from the center to wherever you want to consider the magnetic field, divided by 2 pi r squared, which is r, of course, is the radius of the total cylinder. And, of course, I still need the theta unit vector to complete that. What you will find is now that we're going to try to plug it into the, uh, what we call differential form of uh, Ampere's law, if you use this equation right here, you're going to run into trouble. You want to use this equation right here, and then later on in the next video, I will show you the relationship between those two equations and how to deal with that. So that comes later. But first of all, again, let's review the equation. It's the curl of B is equal to mu sub naught times J, which is the current density through the region uh, where we want to consider the magnetic field going around. Um, and, of course, the magnetic field doesn't really go around it. It's situated around that region with a magnitude b going and in, of course, a circle direction. So this is considered what we call the curl of b. That's really the way we express it. This is the curl of b. This is the del operator crossed with the b vector, the magnetic vector. By definition, it means the circulation divided by the area. And, of course, now we realize that the circulation really means the strength of the b field times the circumference of that path of the b field divided by the area. And, of course, the circulation can also be defined as the line integral of the B field times DL, DL being a small line segment along the B field and then integrating it all the way around, which means times 2 pi r, which is the circumference of that circle, divided by the area right here. So that's what we mean by the curl of B is equal to mu sub naught times j. Now, we need to take the curl of B right here in the cylindrical coordinates, and this is how we do that. Now we have to find out what B sub r, B sub theta, and B sub z are. Of course, B sub r and B sub z, they're actually zero because the B field only acts in the xy plane, not in the z direction, not really outward. So we can already see that these two components are going to go to zero. Now, B sub theta is what we have right here, but to make it a little bit easier to deal with, notice that r is the variable, the only variable we're dealing with, mu sub naught i 2 pi and r squared, which is the a radius of the total cylinder right there, those are all constants, so we can write the b vector equals to a constant times r in the theta direction. c simply being equal to mu sub naught i divided by 2 pi r squared. Those are simply constants and it's just easier to write it like that and then later on we can plug in the true value. So what we're going to do here is the b sub theta is then going to be written as c times r, so this now becomes r cr or simply cr squared. So see what we're doing? It's r times b sub theta, b sub theta c times r. So it'll be c times r squared. So let me just write c times r squared down here. c times r squared, c being constant, times r squared. r being the radius from the center of that cylinder to wherever we want to consider the b field inside the cylinder. That's the key right now. We're only going to do the portion where we're inside the cylinder. All right, so taking the curl, and let me grab my black pen right here. So this is equal to, uh, we're going to take this vector right here. So it's 1 over r times the unit vector r theta times, it will be, so if we take this column away and we take this row away, we have this times this minus this times this. So we have the, so we have the partial with respect to theta times 0, because this times this, minus this times this, so it's the partial with respect to z times cr squared. Now right away, 
since C and R are not in the Z direction, this is like a constant when we take the partial derivative and this simply will be zero as well. So minus the theta vector times, it'll be this times this minus this times this, and so it'd be the partial of R with respect to B sub Z, which is zero, minus the partial of with respect to Z times zero as well. And so you can see that is equally, that is also equal to zero. So this component is zero, that component is zero, then plus the one over R times the Z unit vector times, and it'll be this times this minus this times this. So let's take a look at that. So it's the partial with respect to R times CR squared. Now there we have a real term right there because C is just a constant and we can take the partial with respect to R of R squared. So that works out minus, and then we have, um, we have one over C. So it'll be this times this. So it'd be the partial with respect to theta of zero. So obviously the partial of zero must be zero. So that's zero. Uh, this is the partial with respect to z times cr squared. That also must be zero because this acts like a constant with respect to z. This will be zero. This is zero. And then, of course, this here is zero. And the only surviving term is this right here. So when I take the curl of b, that's the only surviving term, which means that the curl of b is equal to, it will be 1 over r times the z unit vector. And the c can be taken out because that's just a constant times the partial with respect to r of r squared with simply 2r, like that. And of course, we have 1 over r times r that will cancel out, and which means that this is equal to 2c in the z direction. So that is the what we call the curl of b, and of course, we know that c is equal to mu sub naught i divided by 2 pi r squared, and so this therefore is equal to 2 times c, which is mu sub naught, times i divided by 2 pi r squared, and then the 2's cancel out, and so this is equal to mu sub naught times i divided by pi r squared. And notice, now this is interesting, this quantity right here, of course, let me circle it in a different color. Oh, I forgot my unit vector. Thank you. Yes, I don't want to forget my unit vector. That's bad news. There we go, because it's a vector quantity, so it's in the, in the z direction. And <clears throat> let's see here. This quantity right here, notice what that is equal to. If we go back up here, i divided by pi r squared is indeed the current density. So this can now be written as mu sub naught times the current density in the z direction. And so what we're saying now is that the del cross b, or the curl of b, the curl of the b field, is always going to be equal to the permeability of free space times the current density defined by the total current, total current to the cylinder divided by the area. And so therefore, that's what the curl should show us when we actually work out a real life example, knowing that the b field is going to be defined like this inside the cylinder at the radius r, and so that's the result. And the z direction simply means that the, that the current density is in the z direction, so it's directed upward, and that would be an, an automatic result of that. So there you go, a real life example of how we apply um, what we call Ampere's Law, which is the third equation of Maxwell's set of, set of Maxwell's equations in differential form. Hopefully, this will kind of really nail it for you.